Hey everybody, let's continue our discussion of the mesh current method, but now with special considerations, such as if we have current sources in the circuit, and if we have something called a super mesh. So first of all, let's give this one a try if we use the mesh current method. So I'm just going to label these with some mesh currents. Okay, so I made three mesh currents. So let's start with mesh A. So let's go KVL, and I drew my mesh current clockwise, so let's go clockwise. Let's start right here. So clockwise, going up, so KVL for mesh A, so that's minus 100. Continuing clockwise is toward the right, so that's 3 ohms times IA minus IB. Okay, continuing clockwise over here. What do we write here? Minus 5? That is not a voltage. This is KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law. So we're writing the voltage going around the mesh. The voltage is not 5 amps. The voltage is... we don't know. So you actually have to specify there is some voltage over here. We'll just call it V. So, plus V. That unknown voltage across the 5 amp source. Okay, let's continue going clockwise, so that would be toward the left. 6 IA. Okay, let's go to mesh B. We'll start right here. So going clockwise over here, that would be 10 I B, continuing clockwise. Here means to the left, 2 I B minus I C, continuing clockwise, that's to the left, I B minus I A. Okay, now mesh C. So let's start over here. So going clockwise means going down, so that would be positive 50 toward the left, 4 ohms times IC. Going up would be negative V, and then finishing going toward the right, 2 IC minus IB. Okay, so notice that we have three equations, four unknowns. Okay, so what do we do? We need one more equation. We can relate the 5 amp source to the mesh currents. So mesh current IA is going this way. Mesh current IC is going this way. So if you look at this picture, just think about which one is more. IC has to be more than IA. How much more? This much more. IC minus IA is 5. Right? And just think about that until it really sinks in. For example, like IC could be 8 amps, so then IA has got to be 3. Or let's say uh, IC is 2 amps, then what is IA? Negative 3. Right, see how this is bigger than this? And IA being negative 3 is the same thing as if we drew it going the other way, like this way, with 3. Okay, so now we have four equations, four unknowns, which I would, I mean, practically, I would solve this for V and then plug it right there, and then we're back down to three equations, three unknowns. And then I would go, let's say, IC equals 5 plus IA. Anytime I see IC, right here, right here, here, Right, just replace it with 5 plus IA, and then we're back to two equations, two unknowns. So it's not that bad. 
Okay, regarding that whole super mesh technique, if you ever see two meshes with a current source in between them, which is right here, there are two meshes, mesh A and mesh C, with a current source connecting them. You can treat this entire thing as what is called a super mesh. And then just write KVL for the super mesh, and you can ignore the current source. So let me bring in a picture where I cut that out. Okay, see? So mesh A, let me draw the same mesh currents as before. So this is mesh A, mesh C, mesh B. So see how you can just cut this out like this. It's gone. And then you just consider this super mesh. So you write KVL for mesh B, KVL for the super mesh. As opposed to writing three mesh equations for mesh A, B, and C. Okay, so let's try it. Let's say we write um, for mesh B, I mean, we have it already right here. So for mesh B, same exact thing. So that's done. Done. Okay, now KVL for the super mesh. Okay, let's start here and let's go around the super mesh clockwise. So going up would be negative 100. Okay, continuing clockwise where the super mesh is toward the right, and that would be 3 ohms times IA minus IB. Continuing around the super mesh, this is the super mesh like this, right? So we're here now, so that will be 2 times IC minus IB. Continuing clockwise here, plus 50. Continuing clockwise, we're right here, 4IC. Continuing clockwise right here, 6IA. Okay, so that's for the super mesh. And we have two equations, three unknowns. And the last thing we can do is relate the mesh currents IA and IC to the 5 amp source, which is exactly what we did right here. So I'm going to write that again. And here we go. We have three equations, three unknowns. So the super mesh technique got us, instead of having to write four equations, four unknowns, three equations, three unknowns, because we got to skip having to consider the voltage across that current source. So that's the strategy. That's the time savings. It saves you writing some equations. Okay, how about just one more example, just so you see one that looks different. So this is kind of labeled for us already. So see how there are three mesh currents, IA, IB, IC. But if you look at it, this is a current source between these two meshes, which means you can treat this as a super mesh, ignoring that current source. Because if you didn't, you would have to label this with some unknown voltage, which is just introducing another unknown. If you do the super mesh, you can ignore this one. So that's the picture here on the right. If we already cross out that current source, and then here's the super mesh, and then if we go around, let me make some space here. Okay, we have more space. So 
let's go around the super mesh. So let's start right over here. So I'm going clockwise around the super mesh. So here, that's R1, IA, continuing clockwise, going this way, going this way. So we're over here now, plus VCC. Continuing going clockwise means going up over here. So plus RE times IC minus IB. And then continuing clockwise over here, minus V naught. And that's it. And then let's go around mesh B, which is right here. So if I start right here, going clockwise, that's R2IB, going clockwise, plus V naught, going clockwise, RE times IB minus IC. Okay, so if we look at it, we have two equations, three unknowns. We need one more equation which we can relate this mesh current and this mesh current to this one right here. So if you look at the direction, right here's the dependent source, the current is, the mesh current is here and here. Ooh, and let me draw that arrow over here. Okay, so which is more? This one, IA is more than IC by how much? This much this much. Beta I B. Okay, and then last thing, what is I B? I B is this branch current right here. So it's going, I B is the branch current right here for that voltage source. But look at the mesh currents around it. There's I A over here and mesh current IB over here. So what is branch current I capital B? This one is more than this one, right? How much more? This branch current is more than this branch current by this much. So there we go. This goes right there, and then we have three equations, three unknowns. Okay, so give these a try, and I'll see you in the next video.